So today I'm here with Jason. He's a professor in the management department here at Western. So Jason, tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do. All right. Um, so I've been at Western about nine years, 10 years. And uh, my background's in psychology, um, organizational psychology. So uh, the simple way to put it is I, I think of myself as the, you know, I'm in management, I'm in business, but I'm really I'm uh, focused on the people side of business. And the courses that I teach and the research that I do is all related to um, people and their psychology and relationships and the interpersonal aspects of work and working life and organizational life. Um, and uh, I have done some teaching on topics of diversity. We have a class uh, on managing cultural diversity. And it's through teaching, really, that I've gotten more uh, plugged into the, the, the topics of social justice and, and diversity. Great. Um, so what does social justice mean to you? Uh, well, you know, I, I kind of come at the, the, some of these key terms like equity and, and justice and everything from a, a very psychological and organizational behavior point of view. And, and justice is the way I understand justice in general in terms of the way I teach it is, has to do with fairness. And... Um, uh, so I think of social justice as very much about fairness uh, and, and how we handle all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And fairness is a really subjective thing. Like I can see something as perfectly fair and somebody else can experience it as quite unfair. And it's, it has a lot to do with our frame of reference and our, our point of view. And um, so when I think about social justice in this kind of context, I, I really think about trying to understand how other people perceive and experience the things that they are part of and not necessarily imposing my own sort of assumptions or, or frame of reference about what is right onto others, but trying to see it from the perspective of the person going through it. Um, and I think about, you know, the social justice, you know, kind of moving it to that level is, is um, and I don't have a very clear thought on this other than I, I see it as, as kind of like a, a way for people to, a, 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 a domain in which we're really thinking about all aspects of how we engage with each other in, in, in sort of informally and formally, you know, as, as an organizational uh, scholar, you know, I'm really interested in the system and how the people interact with the system and, and, and how they influence it and how the system shapes them. And so I, I paid a lot of attention to how these systemic and institutional and all of those kinds of forces uh, are shaped by and shape the individuals within them. Mm -hmm. And uh, the social justice with respect to that is about, um, you know, kind of examining, which I don't do in my own research, but uh, thinking about how the, how the systems have been created and how they play out and how different people, the part that I'm really interested in is how different people experience those things and, and really understanding the individual experience. Great. So how do you promote social justice in your daily life? Uh, well, you know, I should say, honestly, probably 10 years ago, I didn't even really think about it. I mean, I probably thought about social justice if I was asked about it as, well, yeah, I mean, that seems important. And I would say that I value that. Um, but I don't think I've really thought about it in my daily life. I think I, I just assumed that I was contributing to social justice because I don't do anything bad. You know, I can't, couldn't really see myself as, as, as being uh, biased. I mean, you know, I know that, and, and, but as I've gotten more into psychology, I've come to realize, oh no, you know, it's just because I, I don't really, I'm not very cognizant of my biases. A lot of things I take to be normal or true or are, are really just perspectives and assumptions that, that, that are based on my, my frame of reference. And, and don't really consider the fact that what what's normal for me is, is quite unusual for many others mm. and, and vice versa. Um, and so, you know, over the years as I've taught in the subject and dialogue with students and try to get more involved in, in, in realizing what there is to understand here, you know, both as like an academic, but also just as a person, um, I've started to really try to as much as somebody who, like me can, you know, I'm a, I'm a white, heterosexual male, um, you know, from a 
relatively privileged upbringing. You know, I mean, I have a lot of things lining up for me identity-wise that, that um, you know, I don't want to attribute it to that, but that I would say, like, that I didn't even question a lot of this stuff for, for many years. And so it was through um, starting to interact with different people and learning about different kinds of experiences that people have and, and just getting exposed to ideas, which is partly why I'm a professor, is because I like to encounter and work with ideas. Mm -hmm. Starting to realize there's a lot, a lot I don't know and a lot I don't understand. Um, so I do think I do work in social justice now, even though I don't really always label it that way. Um, and I think I've been able to have some impact, but I also realized that, I mean, there's, there's so many people, even at Western, who've devoted their entire career in, 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 in passion in a way that I, you know, haven't. And, and so I really see myself as just a kind of a small piece of the larger puzzle. But I mean, practically, I guess I, you know, I'm on the president's task force for equity, inclusion, and diversity. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm on the, uh, the Equity, Inclusion, and Diversity Task Force, and I've been on that since it was created. And, um, I mean, that's probably my most formal role in, you know, the social justice work I do on campus. Um, and I was, uh, frankly, I was really surprised and grateful and honored to be asked to be on it in the first place. I, you know, it, the fact that people on the campus thought that I was a, a good, sort of an, an obvious for some people, and a good choice to, to do that was great. And um, I feel that I've uh, tried to take it really seriously and, and, and do good work on that group. Uh, certainly representing my own values and points of view, but also really trying to understand people who see things quite differently than I do. You know, like I. I, I know that on campus there's a lot of people who are, well, I don't know if a lot of people, but I know there are people on campus who um, are very resistant to these kinds of efforts towards social justice and inclusion, not because they're necessarily against the idea of it, but they have a problem with the way that it's being done or that it's it's compromising other values that they value um, or, or something, and it's, it's complicated. Um, people who, who think of themselves actually as quite liberal and open-minded and, and and not, you know, str they're struggling with this and they can be really resistant to it. And so I've tried to understand and represent that point of view, even though it's not one that I share, and try to find a way to engage, or be in the middle of that. And, mm -hmm. and, and I, I think there's a lot more I could do in that respect. And I've, I've been thinking lately about how I can do that more um, just in my own day to day with, with the people that I encounter and have different points of view and how do I, how do I engage a, a healthy conversation with those people about it mm -hmm. that isn't gonna just trigger all these defensive sort of shut down reactions. Because mm -hmm. um, it's obviously a really emotional topic for a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. Um, I've done a lot of work in the college to try, you know, as, as faculty we do a lot of, you know, service, quote unquote, um, which is just things that aren't teaching or advising or research or scholarship or creative activity like that and, and have to do with serving the, the community, the, the school, the, our college, our department, you know, those kinds of things and creating a better life on campus. And so I've done work trying to create programs that I think, you know, for lack of a better way to put it, help kind of level the playing field for people, mm -hmm. um, whether it's through mentoring and uh, or through, um, I don't know, just bringing attention to things that might otherwise be inequitable mm. uh, systemically. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about the specific programs you've created to do that? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah a, a few years ago in the college, I created, um, well, you know, I, I'm thinking back on my own experience. Let's just kind of give you a little perspective. Like when I, when I joined the college in, in Western, which was like in 2007, um, and I, I really enjoy Western. I've had a really good experience mm -hmm. here and I've, ultimately settled into Bellingham well, even though I would say probably the biggest grievance I have about it, the whole area, is just the lack of diversity. Um, and that's a that's really important to me, not necessarily because I, you know, it's, it's important to me in a way that might be different for people from underrepresented groups, because not because I, I, I need that diversity to find kind of 
a certain community, but it's just I just don't like the fact that I can, I can walk around and and not be you know not hear other languages and not see mm-hmm. you know see I see a lot of similarity when I walk around and I just I grew up in a, in a much more diverse environment than that and I I, I like I value that mm-hmm. and uh, but I do otherwise like this area and I like Western but when I first joined I I, I realized in retrospect that um, it was very uh, unceremonious maybe in terms of joining like suddenly I was here and I had an office and I was working and I was teaching and I was doing my thing and mm-hmm. and it was very you know I was, people were very collegial and nice and whatever but I never really felt particularly welcomed or there was no real ritual or um you know I in my you know I think one person maybe came by and said welcome and introduced themselves to me mm-hmm. it took me a long time to meet anybody outside my department um you know I don't really recall other than maybe one or two people anybody offering to take me out for lunch or coffee to just see how I'm doing check in you know there's just none of that it didn't happen and I didn't fault and I didn't I was fine about it I, it didn't really affect me professionally but as I thought about it I just realized like this is strange you know like why why is that the case and I I, I started to imagine you know again as, based on my identity as it is I started to imagine okay well it never occurred to me that the reason somebody didn't do that was because I'm a man or because I'm white or because I'm whatever you know it, it just didn't even dawn on me. I just I just immediately attributed it to what's going on here. It's weird that people didn't do that. I didn't take it personally. Um, but then it, it started to occur to me, like, well, I, I would imagine that if, I, if my identity was different, that I might question that. You know, could it be that it's because I'm gay that somebody didn't, that, that I'm, I'm being excluded somehow or mm-hmm. because of the color of my skin or because of my ethnic background or whatever. And, and those kinds of questions just never even entered my mind. And, and, and yet I could really start to imagine how those questions would enter the mind of somebody who has, you know, been used to or has extensive experience with that kind of prejudice and judgment mm-hmm. and exclusion. And I think it was that realization which I don't exactly know what made me think that way, but when when I started to think that way, I just had this like big aha experience to start to see how different people's experiences of the same thing could be, mm-hmm. and how it's just you know institutionally, I felt that it's irresponsible of the institution to not be sensitive to that. Mm-hmm. And again, I don't fault any person for it. It's nobody did anything, but it's it's just that's just how it was. And, and I just didn't think that was right. I said, you know, to my mind, that should not happen. Mm-hmm. There needs, we need to be more proactive in making sure that that doesn't happen. And we have to do it in a way that is, when I do things that I think are promoting social justice, I'm really oriented toward all, you know, not we'll have this particular program for this particular group or something, but we can, well, let's try to come up with programs that that are available to and could potentially benefit anyone Mm because a lot of differences that we have are not visible anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, people shouldn't have to identify themselves in terms of their sexual orientation in order to, you know, it's their choice and and to whether just to identify. Mm -hmm. And and I don't want to have to um, impose that on people. So I want to have programs that are are, are there for everybody, but that the people who would really benefit the most from them We'll we'll get that benefit, and other people may not get as much benefit out of it. But it doesn't matter. We all have that opportunity. Mm-hmm. So one of the programs that I created was just, a, for lack of a better term, just a, sort of a, an orientation program for new faculty. Mm-hmm. So for the last few years, I've been, I've created and run a a a, a, a good program that meets one once or twice every quarter, where we gather together all new faculty who were just hired including uh, non-tenure track and even new staff are invited to join within the college Mm -hmm. and they can come to these meetings. These meetings are optional, but we're, we invite everybody and I have asked the Dean to help me in in formalizing it, but Mm -hmm. it's totally um, voluntary. And we try to focus these sessions on one, you know, building community among the new people so that they get to know each other and uh, two, helping them feel valued and acknowledged, you know, that we know that they're new and we're making that effort to reach out to them. And then three, giving them useful information that I think is the kind of like the tacit information that you pick up over the years and it's helpful, mm-hmm. but nobody sits down and tells you, mm-hmm. tells you it, you know, just, and there's a ton of that kind of stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. this, in any organization, there's a lot of like 
the ropes, you know, people call it. How does, how does stuff really work around here? How do things get done? What are all the quirks in the system? What are all the, the things that we've all kind of come to experience and take for granted, good or bad, that if you knew about it up front, it might help you? And so we have this kind of program now, and I, I continue to do that. And um, making sure that um, we have a, I've put some effort into trying to make sure that, uh, and others in the college have picked this up as well, which I really appreciate, that all new faculty tenure track faculty have a mentoring committee. It used to be very haphazard, whether some people get it, some people don't, it was very arbitrary. And, and that just didn't seem right. Like we should have it for everybody. And mm -hmm. people can opt out of it if they want, but I really don't like these opt-in things because it puts a burden on people to, to choose it. And then it, you know, so why did they choose it? Somebody else not, that could be. So people can opt out, but I always want systems where it's there and, and you can decide whether you want to participate or not. Mm -hmm. um, I've also tried to be, Although I haven't yet, I've, I've tried to do some work with uh, uh, HR. I, I was trying to run one of the workshops that they've been doing over the last year, and it didn't end up getting enrolled. So continuing to try to work with them to figure out how I can roll out some programs like that. And then mm -hmm. I teach some classes that have content on this in it as well. So those are some of the main things I've been doing. Mm -hmm. Great. And then can you tell me a little bit more about the president's task force and what your role is on that? Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't really have a specific role. Mm -hmm. And I would say uh, the task force is continuing to try to understand itself. Mm -hmm. You know, what what is it and how does it fit into the, you know, Western has a very, um, has a, a value of shared governance where a lot of different people have a voice in the way we do everything. Mm -hmm. And within that system, though it's kind of complicated, there are some established bodies and, and, and ways that things happen. And this task force, part of its challenge has been to figure out where does it fit in all of that. You know, is it is it an extension of the president and therefore kind of an executive thing that just gets to do stuff? Or is it part of the, the bottom-up kind of shared governance process that's going, to, you know, and, and sort of navigating that? But I actually, unfortunately, haven't been super involved with the group this past year, especially the last quarter or two, because of teaching conflicts with their meetings. Um, but... Uh, it's just been a, you know, it's been a group that's tried to be very thoughtful about its own membership and the experiences of people in that group to make sure that it's doing work that represents the, the values that it truly is here to address, which is equity, inclusion, and diversity, and making sure that we kind of practice what we preach and walk the talk. Um, but also trying to figure out how do we in, in affect change on campus with those values in mind whether it's developing a strategic plan for the university that has to do with equity, inclusion, and diversity, or really getting um, targeting specific kinds of programs or initiatives that we want to see happen that we think will move the, the needle and, and kind of advance the university more in, in, in a direction that um, we, we think that it needs to go, but maybe has struggled to or not been aware of even moving in the past. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that Western as a whole, does what it can to promote social justice for marginalized students? Yeah, it's a really tough question for me to answer. I mean, I, from what I see, I know there are a lot of students out there who think the answer is no. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot of things, even in the wording of that question, that's, that's tricky. Like, does Western do what it can? I mean, could it do more? Yes, absolutely. You know, and But part of it is figuring out how to do more. I mean, there's not a lot of institutions out there anywhere in any sector that have really gotten this right. And so it's not like there's a clear roadmap for how to do it. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the fact that Western's even surfacing all of the negativity and dissent, I think is a really positive thing. I think it doesn't look good from the outside. And this is a, you know, something that Western has to sort of endure and just trust that there are probably a lot of institutions out there, higher ed or otherwise, where on the surface it looks much more, I don't know, cooperative or fine. You know, it looks like everything is in order. Mm -hmm. um, and it's likely on many of the, those, those environments that there's actually quite a lot that's in disorder, but it's just not being expressed or spoken or addressed. And Western has taken some steps to, some, some individuals have taken it upon themselves to create a voice and, 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 get, and, and take a voice, you know? But also there's been there's been space created for that voice to be amplified. And in doing that, it's, it's surfaced a lot of 
trouble, like a lot of a lot of difficulties that people are experiencing. And mm -hmm. I think when people hear about that, it's it's sort of like, oh, look at how bad we're doing, you know, because we have we have these this negative experience, and that may be true. There may be a lot of room for improvement, but I do think it's important to sort of step back and say that because people are able to say that here more and more, that in and of itself is a good thing, mm -hmm. and they would not people may not be as free to even say those kinds of things at other places or to have it even be heard if they were said. Mm -hmm. So the fact that there are these increasing opportunities for these, these voices to be, and these experiences to be shared is, is on the one hand can be demoralizing because it's like, oh, look at what's going on. But on the other hand, it should be uplifting to say, I look at, this is what it actually looks like when you're doing this kind of work. It's, it's, it's messy and it's, it's unpleasant and and there's pain, and there's embarrassment, and there's guilt, and there's all of these things, and and more and more that's coming out into the open. And um, surely we probably have a long way to go in terms of what is that going to ultimately mean for change. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I do think there's there's some good things happening, and I think mm -hmm. it's important to give ourselves credit for that without feeling like in any way we're done or have accomplished more than we actually have. So that we continue to push and do more work and create more space, and I think it's also important to realize that Western has a lot of challenges. I mean, we're we're in a very, you know, we're not in one of the more diverse parts of the country in the first mm -hmm. place, um, and so we're we're really there are some external forces that make it difficult to push through the kinds of changes that we want to see. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that we're aware of that, and, and, and I think, you know, Western probably can be doing more, or I don't know, maybe they are doing more, I'm, I'm not sure, sort of partnering with other community organizations and others in the region to say that we all have an interest, not just in, you know, addressing equity, inclusion, and diversity at Western, but in the entire region. Mm -hmm. And, you know, kind of like, if we all get better at that, it's a tide that rises, raises all ships, you know, like we'd all ultimately have an easier time really addressing these issues within our own organizations. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I do, all of that being said, I mean, I, I'm, I try to be really sensitive to the fact that it's ultimately not my call on whether or not we're doing well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can feel good about it and say, we're, we did this and we used to not do that, but it's really about how people are experiencing it. And mm -hmm. it seems like right now that that experience is really buried mm -hmm. and, uh, I, you know, I, I always hope people will be patient and, but, you know, people have been patient for their whole lives and, and mm -hmm. why do they have to continue to be patient? You know, that can understand the urgency that people, some people feel. Um, and there's clearly a lot we can still do. Mm -hmm. What do you think are some of the changes or improvements Western can make to better support marginalized students on campus? Um... I don't know, honestly. I don't really know. Uh, I mean, I think, you know, there's things that we can, I guess, I guess this, I'm really just thinking about this on in the moment because it's, it's, I just, I do think that there's a lot of new territory here. Mm -hmm. I think that, um, I mean, certainly assuming that it's going to be a long time before we've seen any sustained and measurable progress is a good thing to just sort of accept. And, and to, you know, acknowledge that the work that we're doing is likely going to be, have like some steps backward as many as, as much as steps forward. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, uh, you know, we can't just, you know, business as usual is not really, uh, adequate. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, just, just really being willing to question every single thing and doing it in a way that, that finds ways to critique problems without indicting individuals um i mean there may there may be malicious people anywhere you know but i think a lot of what happens here is this more um passivity and 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 naivete about what's really going on and and people are really resistant to to questioning themselves and to looking at themselves and to wondering how they might be part of a problem and not and, and surely, I mean, I'm still, I'm part of that too. I'm not trying to put myself above that, you know. Uh, I think it's, it's often that I'll recognize something that I do or that I've, I've done or that I'm participating in and, and saying like, oh, is this really, 
is this really doing what I what I value, and mm -hmm. is it worth re-examining this? But finding the problems is one thing, and then figuring out how to solve them is totally different. And I, mm -hmm. I frankly don't know how to how to do it. Yeah. Um, I just you know I think continuing to try to work at it is is good. I think the the, the bringing kind of this this awareness is is really important that we're at least getting on more and more people's radar to even question these things and to really mm -hmm. step back and look at it and um but uh yeah mm -hmm. that's really all i can say at the moment yeah are there any people or programs or departments or areas on campus that you feel are doing this work and doing good work to promote social justice they'd want to shout out to yeah i've always been impressed with by woodring's diversity i don't exactly know what they call it but their diversity council internally mm -hmm. to the college um you know and i think that uh uh, that's just as an as an entity, a very important body. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know details about what they do, but the fact that the as a college they have a body that is dedicated to this is really important. And I would love to see ultimately something like that happen in our college too. And I think I don't know what it will take for that to happen, um, but it's certainly something that I think about. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, I think that there's there's a, there are some really remarkable people who've done really great work on campus. Like I, you know, I know I know the, like Nick Sanchez pretty well and in, in human resources, and mm -hmm. he's done some really great work um, rolling out different kinds of programs. I mean, I really value all the individuals on the task force that I've worked with. You know, getting to know them personally and taking chances to express their experiences. Like you know, Shara Sarte Prince has been a really great colleague and. I've enjoyed working with her, and um, I'm really always very impressed with the work that um, Student Outreach Services is doing, mm -hmm. and, and Joan and Dr. P and some of the people over there that I've met, um, just playing a real vital role in, in the work on campus. I mean, um, I don't, you know, Damani Johnson, and he's just he's just an extraordinary individual, so I felt really fortunate to, to get to know him a little bit. Um, and yet, you know, I still kind of feel like, not in a bad way, but just I feel like I'm very much on the periphery of all this. You know, really, I can kind of look at it from the outside and saying, wow, these people, this work that they're doing is really great and extraordinary. Mm -hmm. um, even, you know, Equal Opportunity Office and, you know, Laura Langley, uh, I know better than the others, but I've worked a little bit with Sue. I mean, I just think there's, there's people that are just in this all the time, doing really significant, challenging work. And I really respect it, and I respect the people in it, and I try to contribute to it. And I know that, in the grand scheme, I probably do relatively little. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's like I don't really know uh, what I don't really know the depths of it. Mm -hmm. uh, just like I don't really know the depths of the experience. I, f I actually think I mean that's kind of one of the challenges is is academics and I don't want to generalized but I, my, my sense is that you know academics are you know we're, we're very we're, you know we do research and we do like we, we creative output and and, and we want to understand things so we can teach it to somebody else mm -hmm. and we're talking about things here that that certain people really can't understand like no matter how much I can intellectualize about it there are certain things I just won't know I don't know what it's like to grow up you know um, with a marginalized identity cannot know what that's like. I can read about it. You know, I'm really glad to see the um, Between uh, between the World and Me being chosen as the Western Reads book uh, mm. uh, for next year. I think that's the title. I actually read it recently. And just, again, it sort of blows me away, and I, I learn a lot from something like that. I, mm -hmm. I try not to intellectualize it too much and try to really, you know, empathize with it. Um, but I know that there's only so much I can do not mm -hmm. having had those experiences. And... And I just have to trust that, which is not something I guess academics might be used to doing, but is trust that just because I don't get it doesn't mean it's not happening. Mm -hmm. And just because I can't really relate to it or I can't put it in terms that are going to truly connect with emotionally, that it's not, you know, I have to, I have to learn how to trust the experience of somebody else and say, like, they're, what's happening to them is real, even though I don't totally there's, there's limits to what I could ever really fully understand about it. So, you know, that's, you can see, I mean, I'm not, 
maybe saying this really clearly, but it's this is kind of one of the places where I'm at right now and really thinking about that mm -hmm. is to to recognize the limits of what's possible for me and still being very supportive and, and proactive even mm -hmm. in advancing work that I'm, I know is important mm -hmm. because it's important to others. And it's important to me too, values-wise, but it's just important to me in a different way. And, uh, and, and, and somewhat being disconnected from it to mm -hmm. a degree because I just cannot be in it in the same way. Do you have any advice for students who want to promote social justice on campus or faculty or professors? Yeah. yeah. It's tough. I mean, I was, I was thinking about like the, the group that put out that really bold proposal, you know, that, that has been gotten a lot of attention in different outlet media outlets and things like that. I mean, you know, I don't, you know, it's like, I don't, that's a group that I don't know how to speak to because it's, again, they're coming from a very different place than I am, you know, trying to be agitate and, and challenge the system. I mean, on the one hand, I'm always, I always try to tell people you have to kind of work within the system in order to change it. But then on the other hand, look, what do I know about social change and that kind of thing? It's not, I don't know anything about it. So, um, I do think, uh, I do think we have to strike a balance between recognizing what we currently do and what we want to be doing. And, and, uh, you know, anytime you try to change something, there's somebody who's going to take it personally that like, not necessarily because they're losing their privilege, although that could be, but also because it's like somebody developed that or somebody, somebody has something invested in the way of doing it that way. And, mm -hmm. and, um, and there are merits to doing things certain ways, like kind of the bottom up process by the way budgeting is done or things like that. There's, there's a lot of value in that, even though that also creates certain barriers and obstacles for certain kinds of urgency and initiatives. And, and, um, and so there's a, there's a lot to reconcile here. It's, it's, to me, it seems it's not simple. You know, it's just, it's very complicated. And, um, there are a lot of values that kind of get pulled into the conversation, like academic freedom or social justice, and they can almost feel like they're at odds with each other, even though I think a sensible person would acknowledge both of them is critically important. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, you know, I'd like to see us do better at trying to, to reconcile these things. Um, that's not really very practical advice, but I just, I think like engagement and dialogue is really important. Mm -hmm. And, um, again, like, I think there are maybe people who feel this kind of impatience and this urgency, which I, to I think is totally understandable. But, you know, if somebody comes into Western sort of bringing a lot of, uh, a lot of that impatience and a lot of that urgency because of their experiences outside of Western and even maybe beginnings of some of their experiences at Western, you know, still recognizing that like we're, we're we are trying, we, I don't know who we are, but like as a, there's a lot of people here who are trying mm -hmm. and, you know, let's, I don't know, let's kind of re realize, I guess the, uh, where, where we as an institution are at relative to where everyone else is at. Cause you know, we operate in this broader society and, you know, being willing to challenge the fact that we're not necessarily doing it a whole lot better than anybody else, but we're also not really, it's not clear that we're a whole lot worse than anybody else either. And where are we doing well and what can we build on? You know, I'm, I'm, I am kind of a, a proponent of this idea of appreciative inquiry where, yeah, there are problems, but there are, surely there are things that we do well. Mm -hmm. in any domain and people it, there's more energy connected to the positive than there is to the negative I mean there's there's some negative energy connected to the negative but that can be really destructive so like how do we look at what we do and know that we need to do better but know that we're also surely have some things we can build on mm -hmm. and and be willing to acknowledge that and not just sort of scrap the whole thing and start all over you know mm -hmm. I, I just think that there, there's got to be ways to build on things we're already doing mm -hmm to kind of get better. And so, you know, it's like I tell, I would tell this to a student in, or anybody in, you know, in, even in like a doctoral seminar or something like it's, it's easy to take somebody's paper, their research and look at it and find what was wrong with it. Hmm. But what's right about it? You know, what's good about it? Like how do it, it's not totally awful. You know, I mean, there's surely something about it that's redeeming. Mm -hmm. And I just think we kind of get into this whole mindset of like challenging and dis destroying and undermining everything. And, Maybe ultimately everything will change, but I think we, we there's some value at starting at also asking questions of what's right and mm -hmm. what are we what are we what are we building on, 
and what's go what do we have going for us right now mm -hmm. and and putting things in, in a broader perspective in that sense so I guess that's that's where I, that's a piece of advice I would offer mm -hmm. um, again it's not like very concrete but um, pushing for change but valuing and, and being willing to acknowledge these glimmers of of opportunity and 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 goodness in what we're already doing. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing your perspective with me. I appreciate you sure. letting me interview you. Yeah, it's my oh. pleasure.